You can download the art seen in the video for free, link in the description. For a smooth screen shake effect in Godot, first, add a camera 2D note to the scene, then save the scene, and add a script. Inside the script, we're going to define six variables. Shake intensity and active shake time will both hold the intensity and the amount of time for the screen shake when we call the screen shake function that we will create soon. Shake decay will control how fast the screen shake's intensity will fade over the duration of the screen shake, with a higher number decaying the intensity more and vice versa. Shake time will track how long the screen shake has been going for and will tell the noise generator where to grab a number from as the clock ticks forward. Shake time speed will control how fast that shake time clock ticks and we use noise to hold a noise texture which will assist in the screen shake's shake pattern and allow for it to feel more natural, which will also allow for greater randomization and control over the shake pattern. Keep in mind that this noise variable is simply a smooth gradient of numbers that we can use with multiplication to create sudden movement in different directions, with the gradient of numbers helping with a more natural transition and feel from the previous sudden movement. We will then add two functions. This includes the built-in physics process function and a custom function called screen shake. Inside the custom function, we have two built-in variables, one for the intensity of the screen shake and another for the total amount of time that the screen shake is active for. First, we call randomize, then we set the noise texture scene to a random integer, and then we set the frequency to 2.0. We need to call randomize as to avoid the random number being on a set seed, causing the screen shake to be the same every time you reopen the game, meaning that when we call randomize it also randomizes the random seed of the game, and thus provides a different number in the randi function whenever we close and reopen the game. Additionally, we use randi on the noises seed to ensure that the pattern is randomized. You can also edit other properties of the noise texture here for greater control over the screen screen shake pattern. Next, we update our two variables to store the function's built-in variables. This is because we will reference these variables inside of the physics process function later. And the reason why we do it this way is to make the code much cleaner whenever we call the screen shake function from another script. We also make sure to set shake time to 0.0, .0 as to reset the position of where to look for the smooth gradient of numbers inside the noise variable. Inside the physics process function, we first check if active shake time is more than zero. This means that the screen shake hasn't completed yet. Then we update shake time and the active shake time variables appropriately. We increase shake time as to change the position in the noise of where we are grabbing the number from. Active shake time takes down slowly so it reaches zero within the amount of time requested when we call the screen shake function. We also make sure to use delta so that the increase or decrease is independent of the player's frame rate, making it consistent across varying amounts of frames. We then set the camera's offset so that the screen shake. Keep in mind that if you're using offset for something else, then you can instead make the camera a child of a node 2D and use that node's position as the offset instead. Inside the offset, we are grabbing the random position to move the camera towards. The these two lines will grab a random number from the noise in the respective axis, and we multiply by shake intensity to apply the strength of the shake. Next, we decrease shake intensity by ticking it down using shake decay and delta. We use a max function with the comma zero, as this function simply returns whatever value separated by the comma that is biggest, meaning that once the shake intensity becomes less than zero, this function will return zero, stopping the shake intensity from becoming a negative number. Once the screen shake is finished, we lerp the offset towards the default position of zero by zero at a speed of 10.5. Lerps simply moves one number to the next smoothly at the speed of its weight, which for us, the weight is 10.5 multiplied by delta. Now, if you want to activate the screen shake, simply grab the camera, then call the function and add the desired intensity and duration.